the one person that had the greatest impact on my life, I would say, is Rabbi Noah Weinberg of Blessed Memory. About 12 years ago, I was roaming around alone and bored in my grandparents' house when I found this old cassette album with a bunch of tapes. I had nothing better to do, so I pressed play. And that, for me, was a point of no return. I was mesmerized. He had so many promise promises. Let me play some of it for you. In order to attain pleasure, in order to accomplish your purposes, of course you have to use the tools that the Almighty gave you. In order to accomplish this purpose of living to a hilt, you have to master those tools. And that means anything in living. What do you want? You want to you want to be happy with your wife? Use the 48 ways. You want to be successful in business? Use the 48 ways. You want to be a good student? Use the 48 ways. You use it for whatever you want out of life. If you're smart, focus your goal. Know what pleasure you're after. Because that's the important thing. Otherwise, you're going to be a multi-millionaire, miserable. The 48 ways will get you there. Or you'll win gold in the Olympics. The 48 ways will get you there. <laughs> yeah, sure. If you're smart, keep your eye on the ball. What do you want? Know what you want and make sure that's the ultimate in living. But the 48 ways will get you to wherever you want to go. Now we... When I heard this, I was like, who is this guy? He had so many promises and I, I believed him. That was 12 years ago. Since then, I listened to his tapes over and over again. And I can safely say that he fulfilled his promises. You can get whatever you want out of life with the 48 ways. So, is the pursuit of comfort a one-way ticket to help? Let's see what he says about it. And it's especially a problem in our generation because we're in a generation that has been called decadent. You've heard that term? We're decadent? We don't really know what decadence is. Let me give you the definition of decadence and at the same time convince you that we're really decadent. The way we do that is that we ask, uh, what's your name? Jeffrey. Jeffrey? Jeffrey, what would you say is the opposite of pain? Pleasure. Right? That the opposite of pain is pleasure. So therefore, you avoid pain at all costs because we are pleasure seekers, right? And if the opposite of pain is pleasure, then pain has... Definitely not going to give you pleasure, right? Now, get rid of this. This is a myth. The opposite of pain is in reality, a lack of pain is comfort. The opposite of pain is to be comfortable. To think that the ultimate pleasure is to be comfortable, that is decadence. To think that the ultimate pleasure in life is to be comfortable, no pain. To identify that pleasure means comfort, is to be decadent. You can't take pain even for your pleasures. You can't fight for your freedom. You can't struggle to understand because it's painful. And painful is what I'm avoiding because that's the opposite of pleasure. Decadence means you can't fight anymore. You know, like Rome or Jean. <laughs> Just comfort. That's it. So, see who this is. Realize, I don't know if you ever read A Brave New World. Huh? The ultimate decadence is to withdraw in the womb and have pipes leading to your, you know, you don't have to eat and have sensations fed to you and you're back in the womb. Huh? Comfortable. Snug as a bug in a rug. Yeah. You get the picture? That's where decadence will lead you. Yeah. Today we have can't perform and we're not that. You still have to go to work to get some money, yeah. But then you go and connect yourself to the TV too. And you don't have to think and you know, sensations. You know, we're on the way. Some people turn off the TV and they want to live a little bit, yeah. Get their own exercise rather than watch a guy jump over. <laughs> they, uh, yeah. But realize that that is the definition of decadence and. D of this to free yourself from decadence is realize that pain is the price we pay for pleasure. If you want to be a champion, you will have to take a lot of pain for the pleasure of being a champion. Is that right?
Nobody's going to make it. If you want to jog, you want the pleasure of being fit, you have to take the pain of overcoming the body's <laughs> desire to stay in bed. You have to pay in pain for pleasure. You know what the greatest pleasure in life that most people are aware of? What do you say? What, what is the greatest pleasure of your parents? Not you? Most people who have children, the greatest pleasure in life is our children. And you know what the greatest pain in life is? See them fail. I never see them fail. I see them going bumping off walls and turning on you. And yeah, you don't know. Oh. Greatest pain? So if you think that the opposite of pain is pleasure... <laughs> You're not going to have children. You don't wake up in the middle of the night and responsibilities and you postpone it. You know, figure I don't want to miss up on it, but maybe when I'm 35, that's when you can be able to take the pain. You know, it's a little too early. I still want my, you know, my comforts. You have to pay in pain for pleasure. So Rav Noah Weinberg says that the definition of decadence is thinking that the ultimate pleasure is comfort. While this is 100% true, I want to take it from another angle. And he would be the first to advocate this. Where does this idea come from? Why is it that we all subconsciously believe that the ultimate pleasure is comfort? The answer is one word, heaven. Any religion that I know of, well, no one knows exactly what heaven is. Everyone seems to agree that heaven is a place of no pain, comfort. We all want to go to heaven. So is comfort bad or is comfort the ultimate pleasure? After all, heaven is supposed to be the ultimate pleasure. In life, Anything good, if used incorrectly, can be bad. So how can you use pleasure for bad? If you work hard and grow, it's pleasurable. But if you work too hard, if you're hard on yourself, if you bash yourself, that will be pleasure that's used the wrong way which would actually take the pleasure out of whatever it is you're doing. So how could you use comfort for bad? That's what Rev. Noah Weinberg's talking about. Snug as a bug in a rug. But comfort could be used for good too. In fact, everything that's good Everything in this world is good. It's just that you could use the, you could take the good and use it for bad. So how is comfort good? When a loved one passes away, we comfort you. If you break up with someone you were dating seriously, you need comfort. If you're hurt, if you're broken, if you're not whole, you need comfort. Comfort is healing. Comfort makes you whole. So if you hug your pillow when you're supposed to get out of bed, that's your body using comfort in the wrong way. But really, comfort comes from the soul. Your soul needs to be whole. Your soul needs to be okay. Your soul needs to feel valuable and lovable and that you're a good person. Otherwise, you're not whole. All sorts of mental illness come when the soul feels broken. A person loses their ability to function. If you feel unlovable, or unvaluable. It diminishes your ability to perform as a human being. It 
it's definitely a root cause of, of anxiety, depression, and most mental illness, if not all. Being yourself is comfort. Being self-conscious about our, what others think is a lack of comfort. So is comfort a one-way ticket to hell or the greatest pleasure? Both. If used in the wrong way, comfort can lead to a wasted life. On the other hand, if used properly, comfort can make you whole. And heaven is a place where you're your real, whole, full self. Heaven is where you live your soul and have no body. It's the pleasure of true comfort that the body doesn't get in the way of. It's a pleasure of being one with yourself. And even greater, it's the pleasure of that one with yourself self, that self that's so whole, so full, becoming one with someone that's the ultimate of wholeness, the ultimate of pleasure. It's the pleasure of that whole, full version of yourself becoming one with God. That's the pleasure of heaven. So there's two ways of looking at this. One, the way that, parent, that children are raised for centuries. You can't have dessert before you finish your healthy food. Meaning, this world is for pleasure. This world is for growing. This world is for working hard. And the next world is for comfort. That's one way of looking at it. The other lesson that you can learn from this is that you need both. Even in this world, you need both. You need comfort and you need pleasure. They need to be balanced. You need to be whole and you need to grow. Without one, you can't have the other. If you don't grow, you won't be whole. And if you're not whole, you won't be able to grow. So comfort and pleasure, you need them in balance. So if you're the kind of person that's very driven, very hardworking, you need to make sure that it's not getting in the way of your peace of mind. And if you're the kind of person that's very nurturing to yourself, you need to make sure that it's not coming on the expense of accomplishing. Let's set out to do great things. You know you can. 